been a 12 win for High Coast the last Ooh. time these two teams played. Good bit of utility being picked up into the pistol here for Triumph. And I also assume they've decided to go ahead and start on that T side, right? They must have got the side choice. It was High mm. Coast pick. So clearly those CT issues could be part of that. Yeah, just want to get as many rounds on the board as possible. Quick plays into the A site, though. They ran up second middle, now attacking through mid as Cooper opening up the first headshot. Pone alone down in pit has got MOTM up on the balcony as well to help him out here. Three-man defense on the CT side. RCF is the only player getting kills, though, for High Coast. He gets two. Couldn't quite get the third out of that. But Ben Lee has rotated over. He is alone in the 1v3 clutch, and Viz, through the bottom of that smoke, lands the headshot. Pistol picked up for Triumph. Well, RCF getting back into his chair and quickly getting some kills for High Coast. Doesn't look like he needed any time to warm up before the game. Unfortunately, his teammates unable to hold the fast pace onto this A-bomb site. Boo there fighting alone towards top mid. And you can see these Glocks barely stopping to move at any point of this aggression. They make sure they can just swarm the site. A final shot from Viz, precise as you like, on the edge of the smoke. And Pone alone just tried to shoot the chicken. He's just killing the chicken. What has that chicken ever done to you, Pone Alone? Oh. Snake. One of the newer players here in Triumph. This Triumph team, you know, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a rough road for them. You know, they've always had these sort of talented players coming up through the ranks. And then obviously having to make changes all the time. Junior gone, Grim gone. They've brought Cooper into the team now, Cynic on the roster. I do feel bad for Sheikh Zola because you have, at one point you have all this talent to play with. You're finally getting the results you want. And then they all just get poached away from you and you have to rebuild over and over and over again. Yeah, he's in that Hunden spot right now. Yeah, he really is. In Denmark. Oh, yeah, seeing everything from above in the sky. <laughs> Not that kind of spot. <laughs> It's important. Wow, nice shot, Cooper. It's important that NA has these players, though, that are kind of willing to, to be at this level. And who knows, maybe if he gets to stick with the roster long term, they can even come up as a team and create another contender in NA. Right now, the top mid control being taken by Triumph. Rotate has arrived. Aggression up mid. And MOTM striking while he can. Here comes Bew, but he goes down. And that's the site lost. On planted here for Triumph as well. Ponolo trying to play with the smoke. I mean, now through Archway, Cynic has turned and picked up his headshot, runs out of ammo, but luckily B-Wills is there to back him up. I think the first outing for B-Wills is back in DreamHack Masters Winter. I think Bly and I got to, to see him in action. I was relatively impressed um, on his triumph performance. Good to see he's fit into the team still. 2-0 up, Triumph off to a decent start here. High Coast haven't really got anything to play with, just the USPs won P250 into the round. So this one should be a Triumph success. That decision to start T side seems to be a fruitful one. Stack in the B site for High Coast. That nade not landing. The second one will though. Tiny bit of damage done onto two players. There is one flash here for High Coast. They're really going to try and make the most of. Ben Leet has to time that right to see if he can catch some players in the mouth of Banana. Cynic moves forward with the Mac Tech. Viz burning away RCF. Could flash kill as well from Pew, but I mean, we're looking at real weak weapons here for High Coast, so their defense is like liquid and not the good kind. And now it's Viz trying to hold on. Got a good kill with a glial. Second form as well. 3-0 up here for Triumph. A fantastic start. Taking the three rounds as easy as you could like. We go into the next one, though, and High Coast will finally be able to compete. We'll see if they can get around on the board on the CT side. It, the, the name of the game right now for High Coast should just be try and prevent as many T rounds as possible from Triumph. As long as they get a, a competent CT side, you're right, they should be pretty... Confident that they can come through into the second half. RCF going for this Ooh. aggression. This is where we get to see if that all is going to be successful in some of these early fights. Let's decide to shy away from that. But uh, now over on that B side of the map, Ben Lee taking a fair bit of damage. They've had to give up that banana control. Yeah, Ben's just been slapped. Down to 7 HP at the start of round four. 
Looks like Triumph when I go into Banana. They've got everybody over here. And B Will's gonna hop up onto his teammate's head, peering over the top of the half wall, clearing out sandbags, checking all these close spots. They still have utility, plenty of it here on the T side, and that is a problem for Ben. If he's playing that B anchor role, Molly comes into his spot. If an aid even drops near him, luckily it is just the Molotovs left here for Triumph. He's very low HP. Pwned alone, being forced away. He's going to throw some counter utility, but Triumph now running into the B side. Rotation coming through from high coast. B rolls right to the smoke. He's got Pi. He's got Pi in the pool. And the kills come in from Cooper. Family brought down, and now Pwned alone. Has some output needed from him, and unfortunately for the defense, they're not getting anything. And that should be a save call, having to come in from high coast. Triumph getting onto the side, keeping all five players alive. A small detail of the molly not landing where it needed to. It bounced back too far. It bounced back into the smoke. That makes a, a massive difference in that round. It's so much easier for Triumph to approach the site without that molly landing on them. If that molly did land, it, it might have split the tees. It certainly would have slowed that push to the site. Maybe then you can allow time for a rotation. Maybe then Ben Leek gets some better fights for himself. But instead, it is an easy take for Triumph. We're gonna look for kills at the end here. Bu gets one. Oh God, he's not ready. There's so many players close by. Cynic will trade him out. And that could make High Coast's life more difficult into this follow-up round. I think if they save three guns, the buy would be much more easy to make. Now with only two guns saved, we know how important those nades are. I'm not sure their money really warrants a buy. No, oh, it's been a very solid start here from Triumph. Exactly what they need on the T side, given their defensive weaknesses. They've been so poised on this T side. Double molly into the apartments. RCF coming back away from it. Grenade as well, that into Banana from High Coast. Shikzala and B-Worlds taking the damage. They've got top banana control. They're clearing out everything. Ben Lee over here with the CZ-75. Or CZ for all of you Americans. Should probably adjust that, Alex, for this one. Looks like they just want to execute straight into the B site right now. Smoke down for CT cross. Resmoke in from the CT side, though. They think Triumph are going to go back A, but there's sounds of things. You know, look at the defense and how they're setting up. A third, the third player, right? The rotator has actually stayed at A. Looked like he was going towards B, but it's actually come back to play long. And Triumph aren't leaving Banana. 40 seconds remaining. A couple of nades being used into this A site. And it's going to keep High Coast with three players here. MOTM was thinking about rotating to B because it's only two pistol players on the site. But that one smoke has kept him away from B. That should make this push much easier for Triumph. Well, good nade again. Ben Lee forced off the coffins, though. Good utility usage. And Ponolo not getting anything from the middle of the site. Now Viz crossing over. Shig Solo with the headshot. The rotator player MOTM getting one through the smoke, but it's not going to be enough, of course, to be able to compete in this round. So I'm saving the M4 and the AWP into the next one. High Coast. Not winning around yet. And Triumph again with success. 5 0. They've been really abusing that B site. And so far, High Coast haven't had too heavy of a focus on B early. We haven't seen a, a 3B stack. We haven't seen much in terms of trying to take banana control. It is much more difficult for the CTs to take that banana control these days. And even if you do, oftentimes teams have the mollies and have the nades to clear you out of those close angles. This just died to the bomb, but it's all good. Triumph have hella money. Uh, fine, we're taking a one-for-one -one trade at the end there. It's time for High Coast to have a buy and the double AWP setup, Dinko. Maybe having an AWP on Banana could be the answer they've been waiting for. We'll see if Triumph go for the same round on the T side, though, if they change up something on their side as well. It's going to be RCF peeking down middle. 3B early, utility coming in, and more second mid-centric approach here from Triumph. Delay take of Banana. In fact, just leaving one player over here at B-Wills to try and at least show some presence. He's throwing an aid over the top. 
But again, it is a very a heavy round here for Triumph at the moment. A lot of utility being used by High Coast on Banana, but they haven't got the control yet. They haven't got the information to mm. allow them to rotate over to A. So it's still only two CTs on this site for the time being, with a third man arriving now on the rotate. Smoke in from RCF. Thought he was about to be tested there, but with that smoke, that should buy some extra time for the defense to get into a better position. And they're actually looking quite good now. They've got that banana control. They've got the extra player rotated over towards A. And we'll see I'm re-smoking long as well. RCF has rotated from his initial position out long back to play from the site. He's poised and ready in towards short for an attack. And Triumph are certainly still leaning in towards A. They'll go back to banana, but Ponalone is here with the AWP. The secondary AWP posted at cart. And looking for the peak of Sheikh Zola, and that's the pick before the flash. They've still got a second player in Banana as well, so I'm going to try and get into the A site, but Bureau's got a big kill on the apartments. And now Triumph down two players are just being picked apart piece by piece, and they should be out of this round unless B-Wills and Cynic can pull off an incredible 2v5. There's one from B-Wills, and Cynic left alone now, making his play out of the apartments. 15 seconds to recover that bomb, and it's just so unrealistic to expect anything from him. Eight seconds forced into the site. The man shooting at him from the bomb site, but he was worried there might be another player waiting in the wings. And unfortunately, he can't find RCF. High level round between those two teams there. You can see the responses to what's happening across the map throughout this one. I love that Triumph realized they had to go back towards B because they saw that second smoke deployed on A long. At that point, it's pretty likely there is three players on the A site. And I think you can also be fairly certain that the opponents have probably taken some banana control. So they go back, they try and force the opponents away from that. But High Coast remain one step ahead. They get that first hit with the AWP and from there go on to win the round. And now Triumph want to go straight back to Banana. Oh, Cooper. Oh, he only got his opportunity down the jump spot. Molly won't go into top banana position. That separates Ben from his teammate. Separates their teamwork, really. So Ben's going to run back and try to get the safety. Let's take a sprinkle of damage running through the fire. Flash the ray for B Wills. Shanks all now clearing top car. You'll check the standbikes and confirm they have top banana control. And it left on the clock. I think you can see High Coaster are much more comfortable on this B site. Now they've got this second AWP here because they have mm -hmm. used a lot of their early nades on banana. But because they can just have an AWP holding the angle, they, they don't feel like they need the counter utility as quickly. Pone alone now going off the angle though. Smoke down with 40 seconds remaining and MOTM rotating over to B with a molly in hand. That nade late in the round might be really valuable if it can slow this push. They're ready to explode through the smoke though. Pone alone, ready at pillar. Here comes the util from Triumph trying to get into the B site. Missed shot from Pone alone. Shake Zola's taking the entry kill and Viz following up in behind it. Ponalone did get one kill for the defense, but there's still a man down here. Ball plank coming through, nearly denied to the coffin, but it goes down. MOTM not too far off getting that kill. That would have changed the round completely. Might have even won the round. Viz at the back of new box. Two players in pool for triumph. And one out banana. And looks like a very strong post plant right now. Can High Coast even get close to getting back into the site? They forced the new box player to take the fight with the molly, and Viz even gets a kill from it. RCF trades it out, but it's too far gone. The CTs can't win this round. It's locked in for Triumph 6-1. b -Wall's even hanging around trying to drop some extra players, trying to ruin that economy. Luckily, RCF gets the kill. And will carry the AWP over into the next round. Barely staying alive on one HP. Calculated, of course. Just rapid on the time to kill there, the man at new box. These were the initial trades onto the site. That Molly wasn't in a position where it was going to deny, and that was the shot from Viz. If he doesn't get that kill, the retake from High Coast starts to look much more likely. There were two players in pool, and they could have been potentially suffocated from either side. But the fact that Viz gets that one just means it's so much more difficult for High Coast to get towards the site in time. And oh, RCF trying to get that aggression going. High Coast down, so they try and switch it up. And RCF 
gets caught out because of it. Marcy have down at the start of the round. Unfortunate for High Coast. Let's leave them with one all. Oh my god, Ben, that's risky. That's ballsy, and he gets away with it. He gets around the corner, he's picked up that other AWP. Now MOTM might be tested. There's a player coming out balcony. They've started to wrap long, and they should be aware of this hole in the defense. You can see the adjustment being made. It's bringing an extra player in CT, and Bu has actually got a big kill short with that. AWP, Cooper. And you will not enjoy that cracked eggshell. Now with the bomb planted, should be 7-1. And the safe call having to come in from high coast. Viz has had a really good start to this game. 11 kills already. He's been one of the quieter players so far in this tournament for Triumph, but he's had a lot of early impacts here on Inferno. Again, this decision to start T side seems like it's paying off in a big way for Triumph right now. A lot of these plays that they're sticking together and going for pushes and, and making sure they just have those different angles to push into the CTs. And it's just too difficult right now for High Coast to get that counter utility going, which is really what you need to try and deny some of these pushes from different sides. This was the initial fight going the way of Cooper, someone we talked about in the pregame. And you can see here, just wrapping the site so many different angles that the CTs just never able to take fair fights there, never able to establish a crossfire. They still have a buy here, but 7-1 down on the high coast side. I've got to turn this round at some point. Oh, smoke preventing the molly from being effective a card, and that will allow Pone alone to peek down banana at the moment. No victim. Not the ruddy. Two T players still on the stairs at the minute, though. Triumph just playing a slower round at the start of this one. Really nice to get that AWP just posted up on Banana to begin with. Pone alone mollied off the angle, though. That might give High Coast something to think about. As it stands, he's the only player on this B side of the map, but he's not going to get the information quite mm. as early. There's a head spotted, and I think now it could be time to call for the rotate, but High Coast aren't budging yet. Yeah, they think Triumph are going to throw the utility and go back, or maybe we didn't see enough to want to call that rotation. This will be interesting to see how he plays this one. He's stuck at Coffins alone. Now he's see, see the utility. That should be the call for the rotation from the rest of the team. You can see very quickly three players making their way over. Triumph for taking their time, but finally here they go. Pouncing on the site. Three players have made the rotation. Oh, and you would have at least liked one kill there from Pone alone. So just try and stop them from getting to the site with five players alive. Boost over the top. That might cause problems. That's one from MOTM. Couldn't quite deny the bomb plan, but at least gets the kill that draws it back into a 4v4. Last CT just now getting into position over from A. Triumph with plenty of players on the site, but they have the banana control as well. Flash over towards the top. Viz lining up two kills. He is on form right now. Cooper losing that fight into CT, but it doesn't matter. It's too little too late. RCF falls at the end of it. Viz taking over with 14 kills to his name. And this game from, from Triumph has just been so good on an individual level, right? All the close rounds have been there, which just shows that it's just Triumph edging it out on the individual front. These entries as well, you know, you want more out of your only A, uh, B anchor, right? You want more out of the AWP there. He doesn't get a single kill. So Triumph are just winning out the jewels, winning out these close moments with the individual ability. And like you said, it, it's Viz that's <laughs> just unbelievable right now. 14 and 2. What a T half from Triumph. And Maui was saying, you know, the, the CT side from Triumph didn't look, you know, fundamentally bad, right? They were making right calls and making smart moments. And the, the thing is, he, he maybe even pointed out the fact that maybe it's just hitting their shots, maybe. But if everybody's showing up like this today, it might be a different story on the defensive half for Triumph, which gets worrying for High Coast if they're hit one up already on the T side. And none of these close rounds are going in favor of High Coast.
Well, at least High Coast are continuing to get buys on the board. They haven't had many rounds where they've been forced down to a lower buy. This time, Ben Lee on the Orb tries to go up. Takes a bit of damage for his troubles. Whoa. That nade landing dead on, but Ben Lee landing back. And the Orb shot is going to do more damage than the nade does. Everyone's had a go on that Orb, Alex. Everybody's having a turn. Zing game leader this time. That will be finding himself the opening. Interesting setup on the A site right now. You've got the porch stack. You've got the player up on top, one in below at dark. And this should be impossible for Triumph to get around the corner without losing at least one player. Obviously, you want more output with the setup. We'll see how it plays out. Pew playing anti-flash. MOTM looking to take first contact. Molly's going to clear him out, though. It doesn't actually extend his position. In fact, it's smoked off. MOTM has been gifted a chance here. That's one. Pew's taken down by Cooper. Somehow just hard-checked. At least the kill comes in for MOTM. In fact, the double. And it's been pulled back at least into a 3v2. RCF now becomes the player you keep eyes on. He's up in the apartments, and you've got to flush him out. This is going to be so difficult for Cynic. On the fake plant, tries to draw some info out. They know he's fake planted now. Know they've got him pinned in the site. And he's turning all different directions, trying to find the one shot, but couldn't get it done. High Coast finally went around. This was that first kill by Ben Lee back on Banana, and then MOTM fights towards top mid. We've got to give some props to RCF for pushing into the apartments. While those top mid fights were happening, he was the man who was initially watching apps from a more passive position, but he realized he could push into the apps and have a really strong spot to just slow Triumph down as they entered A. And here comes that fast banana aggression. Viz not wasting any time. Early entry onto B. Yeah, Viz just keeping that confidence going. Okay, you win one round, High Coast, but Viz is coming right back and he goes on in. Ben Leet holding from second oranges. He gets one kill. He's picking up the mantle for the team with the entry in the last round, not getting one in the defense. He probably would have liked two there if possible. His team are down a player and that nig goes deep into CT, but they're just trading blow for blow. Cooper reads the boost. He knows that's a possibility. Aware that the CTs were down one player and probably would go for that to try and equalize the player count. And Cooper completely ready for it. High Coast again, forced away. Their money is so low, they have to try and save the weapons. Nice shot from Pew on the cross. RCF, though, is spotted, and Cynic was already on the flank on the A site, just lurking over there solo. RCF not ready for him, and he goes down. Pew as well falls. Cynic making it super expensive for the CT side. And it's 9 2 up for Triumph. What a start from the team. They've come out swinging today. Uh, Ponalo not prepared for the fast swing. Cooper just good awareness. Watches for the boost. Easy line up with the AWP holding the angle. Cooper's not been called upon to do massive amounts so far. Only six and seven. But his first four kills were all opening duels, which is always a positive sign. He had one or two rounds where he was able to get that done with the AWP. Finally, High Coast out of money. Triumph going for a, a good switch up, I think, in terms of their game, where they've had quite a few rounds where they have gone for those fast B plays, but they've mixed in some slower rounds. They've mixed in some rounds where they're medium pace towards A. They've just been switching up their game across the board, and wherever they're ending seems to be successful for them right now. I've just read the, the most ridiculous fact right there, Alex. One M4 kill for RCF, but three dual brother kills. I mean... Man, man is certainly a man of culture. Triumph have been so good on the T side and so methodical that, you know, as much as I will give them a chance to win this round, I feel like it's unlikely they make the mistakes required to allow a Deagle and that Mike 7 round to work out like this, Alex, especially when they're, they're kind of playing pretty standard, you know, like having one in Archway with a Deagle here and one in towards the apartments. It's going to be... Really difficult, but Chick Zola was alone there and he's been isolated. AK recovered. Good damage done through the smoke. Arsenal is hitting in a smoke of his own. Yeah, he's got this P250 in the smoke. He's got by. He's got right by him, Alex. And this might just be a free kill. Oh my god, Cynic. Nice headshot from him. That's the bomb going down. 4v4. Trying to boost over the top to peer into the site. Cynic is taking kills left, right, and center. Finally, the boost pays off for one kill. The jump spot over the top as well to get info. Oh my god, this is just a beautiful round out of Snake. Four kills. He's on for the ace already.
And Pew, I think, he's just dropping out. Don't give him the satisfaction. Strong work from Cynic in that one. Aware of all the possibilities. Doesn't let RCF get the drop on him. And he gets rewarded for that awareness with a quad kill on the round. I think one of the, the issues High Coast have been having is up until round nine of this game, the only player to get any multi-kills was RCF. And on a map like Inferno, if you're not getting multi-kills on the hold, if you're just going one for one the entire time, it's just so difficult to start to get into position for those retakes, right? You sometimes need to get more than one kill on the hold, or at least you need to be able to survive and slow things down. So just that, that output of some of the individuals has got to improve for high coast here. They've only got two rounds so far, but we've talked about Triumph's struggles on their CT side on this map. So if High Coast can just keep in there, hang in there, maybe get a couple more rounds at the end of the half, this game definitely isn't over. Just trailing out utility here in Banana. Molly's in from both sides. Hone alone is challenging, so is Ben Lee. And got a smoke up top banana now. Shake Zola has taken a little bit of damage. Similar damage done to Pone alone at the start of the round as well. Not too much really to write home about. With a minute left, the bomb's still positioned outside of A. Three players over there right now for the T side. The three players still in defense for High Coast. It looks like they want to poke for a little bit of info in towards long. And well, TM crosses out and they post the AWP up. This setup is not designed to deal with an app's top thing. Go, Bu is in an awkward spot. Mm, and he's going to be under pressure. And like you said, just not ready for that. Just on top of him, Cynic taking the kill. Shikzola stepping up for the team. And Cooper getting involved with the AWP now. Realizes they've cleared out the A site, so immediately turns his attentions to middle. And currently two players there for High Coast. Pone alone giving a free headshot to Cynic. Just smelling blood in the water and wanting to get involved in more fights. He's already done them. They're already dead. He wants to keep adding insult to injury. This is one of those rounds where you, you get to see CS being a, a game of limited information. Because from High Coast's perspective, if you couldn't see the minimap in that round, if you couldn't see the X-ray, you can understand why High Coast think that's unlikely to be an A play, right? They have a couple of players on long peaking top mid, and they assume, okay, look, if top mid is gonna be this clear, if it's gonna be this open, we're just gonna take the risk that it's unlikely that we're gonna see so many players from Triumph coming out through apps. You might see a couple of those apps plays in a half, but they're not that common. So from High Coast perspective, they start trying to cheat over towards B. They think they've got that advanced information. It turns out the information betrayed them. Triumph explode onto A, and when you have an explosive push like that on Inferno, it's so hard for the CTs to get back into position in time. 11-2 for Triumph. High Coast trying to see if they can get banana control, and Ben has got them off to a good start. Very good start here for High Coast. Oh my, oh my god. god, running right to the smoke, MOTM. He's giving away one kill there. Ben lead up on top of the logs. That's the bomb gifted. Thank you, Shakes. All it. They'll take that. No problem. And now Bu with the distraction is going to try and walk down middle in behind them. And he's going to get an easy kill. Cooper completely unaware of the mid push. And that's just a, a round that's just so strange to me. I like from, from both teams, you know, just MOTM running through the smoke with the two man advantage. Shakes all running through with the bomb alone into banana. And then they just forget about middle. Uh, just a weird round of counter strike right there. A nice step up from Ben Leet, though, just taking that early control of Banana. Got to give him props for that as the IGL of the squad carries them through to the round win. RCF has been somewhat quiet so far. We haven't seen that same aggression from him too often, mm. but it's MOTM getting aggressive. Yeah, really wanted to get involved in the early round here. Just running straight down middle. Fizz, although, taking the first kill. Cynic's <laughs> just hard clearing bottom mid with a MAC-10. And that aggression in middle not paying off for MOTM. So once again, Ben Leek having to step up. And he only gets the one kill with a FAMAS. Bu is all the way down in second middle. But the bomb already on the B side. RCF has made the rotation over. Bu might just catch a knife kill here on Cooper. He's gonna get close, at least something out of the round here for High Coast. It's the night kill on Cooper, now an AK. 
3v2, there's still kits alive as well, and a decent amount of utility here for the CT side. Maybe they can still win this one, Alex. I've got to go for it. Last round of the half, so they have to throw everything at this one. The molly is going to bounce off the wall. It's not going to go where it needed to. And now Triumph can just sit back and try and play the time. Yeah, well, Bu's got another kill. Goes to the lineup, but they double peek him. 12-3. What a fantastic t half out of Triumph. They got as many rounds as they wanted. And it's time for a short break. We'll be right back with the second half. Twelve three at the half for Triumph, a fantastic T side coming out of them. They'll be wanting more of the same heading into the second half. The defensive half is where they've had most of their problems recently, Hawker. Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the last two Inferno games they've played, the two Inferno games they've played in this very tournament, up against Liquid, they were only able to get two CT rounds on the Triumph side out of the 15 they attempted. And that was the last two rounds of the half where it felt like Liquid was starting to, you know, loosen up a bit, get a bit ahead of themselves. But then in this previous matchup, in the opening game of the group, Triumph were only able to get four CT rounds out of 15 against High Coast. So this isn't locked in for them. They've got to make sure they stay focused and stay ready for their CT side. Viz, peaking middle. Now I'm just straight up into the apartments. You know, he's been playing with a lot of confidence in this game so far. Continuing it with the apartments peak down into middle, second middle. Now falls back into the hallway. He's also got Cooper at the bottom of the stairway, a boiler to help him out. 
High coast though. With four players in banana. The bomb also just kind of a T stairs. And just taking their time. Still so much to play with. And utility available over here for Ben Elite. He's got a smoke and a double flash. The rest on Kevlar. We'll see what the idea hit is here for High Coast to walking back up middle. And they've got to deal with Cooper at Boiler. Comes down to the distraction, whether or not he'll be pulled away. That might give an opening for the apartments play to work out as well. Uh oh. Cooper turned his back, and as soon as he looks into mid, oh. MOTM is already there. Viz has been on fine form so far in this game. He's going for more. He's got the second kill, but he's going to have to give up the bomb site. Yeah, Viz is going to go try and get in behind them. Ben Lee at Boiler. He's gone back in, and Viz is ready for it. Three kills in the pistol round. Just out of nowhere here for Viz. He was alone in the apartments and has really stepped up and put them in a solid position. And now RCF is left alone with a clock running into his position. Multiple players. He's got one. He gets away. Pew on the double. Jigsaw and Cynic now trying to win the round for Triumph. But they're playing this one well inside of the site. They've got the crossfire, but Cynic just tearing them apart. We've been talking about Viz, but Cynic has been the man who's been here all tournament long for Triumph. He joins his teammate up at 19 kills, and they get the defuse in at the end. Triumph 13-3 up, just some stunning shots. Individually, they've just been so hot here on Inferno. All these 1v1 fights given to Viz, very tight angles, only the head visible. And then Cynic, this flick to the left side, so fast. Doesn't even give you a chance to properly pull the trigger. It looks like it's Triumph who are in control of this one. 13-3 lead. I think we can say it at this point, Dinko. It's definitely their game to lose, but they are against a force buck. Triumph. Yeah, got to deal with this AK purchase. It's not just any force buy. I mean, they've got three AKs into this one. Ben Lee and Ponalon going and uh, being the charitable teammates who are down just deagles. No Kevlar, nothing else around them, but they've managed to get those AKs into the hands of these armored teammates with utility. They can really do something with these AKs. They're going to play contact out long, sending the deagle in first. Cooper, did he spot them? Now he did. Throws the molly in the archway to prevent the B split straight through archway, but it doesn't stop Ponalone. He's got through already. He's in behind library. Do they expect a player to have gotten in behind? I don't think they do. They're not looking this way. At least another play into B site coming through up through Banana. Ooh, B Wells catches the man in the flames. Ponalone trying to get this reload off. He's dodging bullets left and right, and he's got a kill for his troubles. CT's looking to rotate back into B, but they've lost the sight. Smoke goes down onto CT, and High Coast have three AKs at the ready for the post plant. This is going to be a really hard retake. Cynic just trying to get some pre-fire spam to go his way, maybe even through the smoke as well. But as you said, it's going to be a very hard retake, and I think they've considered that, and they're going to back away. Oh, High Coast coming back in with a force by win and triumph. There would have been a perfect world if they would have been able to pick up the pistol, then the follow-up. They would have been finding themselves near a match point uh, or map point already, but unfortunately not winning this force by round, and that's going to be High Coast up to four. I'm sure that Heiko still aren't thrilled with how this game is going. They'll be happy with that round win. Gives them some chance. This is Pone alone getting into the back lines, causing all sorts of chaos in CT spawn. And RCF getting that one kill through the smoke. Gave the call to go through, get onto the site and get the round win. Try and be able to keep a couple of M4s into this one but three of their players on pistols for this round. The one upside is Triant still have a fair bit of utility that they will try to make the most of in this one. Molly forcing the CT players back into the B site. We've got a rotation of position from Shake Solid, just dropping back into the ruins. their attentions back to A. Oh, ben Leet opening up with a headshot on Cooper. Burning away is Ben Leet though in reply and that will keep it even. A 
They're going back towards Banana, though. The B site currently fairly exposed. A second CT should get here in time, and it's the Rifle of Cynic. If he could step up on the hold, who knows? This round could still be on the cards for Triumph. They've got all the info. They've pushed second mid, and they've got a third man rotating to B. This is possible. This is the best, this is the best chance for Triumph to win this round, and Cynic holding the cross. High coast players now coming through with B-Wills. Lucky to get it out of that fight alive. Shake Zola trying to play in the smoke here. Cynic's pick up the first one. Shake Zola as well on the 5-7. The CT side getting all the kills. And 14 rounds locked in for Triumph. They may lose against the Force Spy in the previous, but they come back swinging in the next. Oh, that information play up second mid. Paying off for them. In emphatic fashion, 14-4 lead, three AKs saved after that round. That's how convincing it ended up being at the end there. Cynic finding a nice double kill after rotating over to the B site. High coast are the ones who are on the back foot. And at this point, it feels like you've had the chance to try and string some rounds together. That's been snatched away from you. You've got to go for another full spy. It's just so difficult to stay in the game mentally at this point, but that's what they've got to do here. Quick reminder to anyone who's just joining us, this is the map pick of High Coast. We were expecting it to be one they were likely to win, but Triumph have just come out all guns blazing on Inferno. Yeah, Triumph are a completely different team today. I've been so in control on the individual front. And Cooper, I mean, we've seen he hasn't really had to do a whole lot. Hasn't really had to be that impactful. He might get himself a kill here. At the start of round 19, draw first blood. It's the MP9 around the corner and MOTM getting the lineup. Two kills down at long and Elf is in the pit. They know he's there. Can they get him out of his position, though? They might not even need to. They're going to run back middle. The last player of B is rotated back to fight CT, but the player Banana is coming through. The information's been passed on to Sheikh Zola, who tries to get over there on time. He's thrown down utility. There's still a player of Speedway for the T side, but Sheikh Zola has got back over to B, and he's got a kill as well. Sheikh Zola making so much space. Viz holding the attack into the A side as well, but Sheikh Zola is the player doing everything on the B side. Unable to get one more kill though, so it's gonna be the bomb down in an even position. 2v2 post plant, RCF down below half health, but Bew's got aggressive into ruins. Cynic has a really hard time clearing this angle. Bu waiting patiently and he goes for the fight at just the right time. Cynic unable to get him and it's Viz in the one on two. Yeah, this is going to be difficult for him, but he still can win this round. He's been unbelievable so far here on Inferno. 20 and 9, but with that time ticking and no kills coming this way, I start to really see his chances thinning out. And High Coast will win the round. Shake Zola with a valiant attempt, but it's not enough done. I think you're right, Alex. I think he needed another kill there, unfortunately. Just couldn't get it over the line. And, well, valiant attempt, though. Snow still gone. We haven't really had the chance to talk about many of the High Coast players just with how this game has been going. But Bu has been one of the standouts for them up there at 18 kills. Got another triple kill in that round. Really well played in the post plant too, just to take that fight at the right time. As he peaked, the player was kind of clearing the left side of tree. So just a great feel for that situation. And even though Triumph have invested fairly heavily into this one, I think the full spy wars might be about to end. This time there's only one primary weapon available to Triumph, and it's just a UMP in the hands of their IGL. Running straight into the B site, MOTM. He's had a few rounds here and there where he's looked really impactful. Good kill for him on the B Wills, and he'll clear out the site. Skirmishes. Oh my god, this is like a Vertigo A site fight right now. Smoke kill finally comes through from all the bullets spammed and MOTM as well picking one up. So many bullets just firing through the smokes and it will be high coast. Keeping most of their players alive. I think Ben might go down here. He's just going to try and get some money on the MAC 10 if possible. He's not going to commit to CT. He's going to run away. No kit here. 
So we won't be seeing any simple-esque antics from Cooper. We'll be staying in ruins with that Deagle, just about staying alive on 5 HP. But High Coast win another round, Alex. Getting much more where that came from, though. And OTM certainly looking sharp on these last couple of rounds, as you pointed out. A lot of early action for him. We were hoping he could be a standout here for this High Coast side. It's starting to come through. It's just such a long comeback that High Coast would have to pull off here. They remain 14-6 down, even though they have forced Triumph back to a weak buy in this one. They get it to 14-7. There's still quite a few gun rounds going up against them. Shots rattled off down mid. That one landed onto the head of RCF, who's lucky to be alive there on 10 points of health. They're going to switch out the Mac 10 into his hands so that maybe he can run in first with that weaker weapon. Wheels playing back on the B site, looking for some more damage of his own. Unable to line up the shot this time. And after High Coast pressure B, they're going to come back to A, but Cooper spotted them and Ben Leitz got his number at second mid. High Coast are going to be sending their forces up banana. Looks like the re-aggression here from Sheikh Solo. If it wasn't caught by MOTM, certainly would have been caught by Bu. And the Deagle here from B Wills. We'll see what he can get out of it. Playing from first oranges. Smoking the CC cross. He is the only player here. And he gets one kill for his troubles. Bu getting the trade kill. And Cynic trying to land something through the smoke. And he has really, really been impactful on this map. 23 and 9. He's had a few, you know, exit kills generally. And that, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, exit kills aren't that impactful. But if you think about the context of it, Alex, you, you see the kills he's getting. It is in those rounds where you want to bring down as many players as possible to affect the economy. So in, in that respect, they're very impactful. Yeah, they all add up. That's for sure. Mm, there's a couple of players around this corner. That's one. I don't think he expects the second play. It doesn't even matter. Bu just peeks him. A lot of headshots from Viz. Saw the pistol success previously. There he gets one with the Deagle. Back to the 14 at 7 scoreline we were anticipating. I think the buy is likely there for Triumph into this one, though. Indeed it is. All out for Cooper. A couple of nades being missed across the team. No kit for the CTs either. Let's have a look at what Triumph CT approach looks like. They're not going to go for much banana aggression this time round. Perhaps the lack of utility playing a part in that. I think this is Triumph just basically sitting as a standard setup across the map. Now that they've got into the first gun round, they're basically saying to High Coast, you have to be the ones to prove you can win one of these gun rounds. And with the banana control taken by High Coast, they're also going to take top mid. This is a, a lot of good ground gained early here by the T side. Definitely leaving their options open. Cooper holding from Archway. Here comes the jump around the corner. Nice shot. Still lands it. Not enough damage done to bring down RCF, though. He'll limp on. Smoke fades away. Cynic getting the chance on the RCF, who is alone. His teammates have actually left him and gone back short. In fact, could actually just go into B. It would be great if Bu can make a little bit of space, and he has. He's got that kill on B. I like that he doesn't commit here alone. He actually stays alive, waiting for the rest of the team to come in now. And they've left just one player holding the B site. It's B-Wills boosted up, but he needs a lot of impact here. He's got to bring down more than one player to feel comfortable, and he's done that. Three kills from B-Wills. That's exactly what they needed. And the last kill comes through from Cooper. What a hold from B-Wills. Oh, there was no CT smoke for High Coast, so they got panicked. They got ahead of themselves. They were they were worried about not having that CT smoke available. They try and get a run boost to go across, but that just gives B Wills the ability to get one free kill before the push comes in, and then he's able to spray down onto two more players. It ends up being an easy shot for Cooper on the cross, and Triumph go within one round of victory here on Inferno. Looking great for their chances on the series if they could win this map. Nades up Banana will do a whopping one damage to MOTM.
That needs done a bit more to Pone alone, though. <laughs> Just a bit more. Flash into B. Shake Stoller is the Coffins player. He's also got his teammate out at New Box. It was the man of the last round here, B Wills. Yeah, try and test B again. Utility keeping them at bay at the moment. Trade damage through the smoke. Shake Stoller's come out a little better on 67. Bu on 58 HP. A minute left, and they are starting to turn their attentions back over to the A side of things. So much utility for High Coast. They clearly have the nade advantage at this point. Biz is trying to play an annoying angle, maybe to try and counter that. Cooper's also got the AWP here on the A site, but assuming we see the nades used into this A side of things, Cooper could have a tough time making the most of this sniper. Smoke at long. Do they walk through it? And setting in it at the moment. Cooper has gone back into the site itself, and the flash over long will allow them to run through. That's a weakness to the B site, but if they wrap A, it might be very difficult for this orb to hold on. Viz has to do some work from the pit. In fact, Cooper just gets brought down with nothing, but Viz stepping up with a double kill. 3v3 retake now. Bomb will go down, and the 3B player's trying to get over. Very slow response from Triumph. They're just now rotating over, but a deep smoke goes down into Library. That's one fewer position the T's have to be aware of. And remember, no nades for Triumph on the retake. They just have to rely on getting given some fights and landing some shots. And the time is going to be against them. Yeah. Especially getting these two players out of the pit as well. You know, they've got two players deep in the pit and forcing those positions out and trying to get those kills without utility is virtually impossible. High Coast have won this round, surely. Shake Zola's been able to find Bu, but the round's already done. They don't even have to leave the pit. That's the issue here. They can just stay in the pit, stay alive into the next round. And High Coast to quickly take that A site. Cooper had to reposition into the middle of the site. And once you're pinchered from two sides, it's impossible when you're playing the Alper from the middle of the site to really get anything out of that. Definitely looked like Triumph just wanted to stick to their guns in that round. Hoping that High Coast were faking out A and would come back to B, because if you run into that stack late, it is going to be a really hard round for the T's to win. Not the right read this time, but if they continue with those sorts of stacks, it's likely at some point Triumph will get the guessing game correct. Two players pushed into the apartments, holding close angles, but Cooper's forced forwards, and he's forced into the waiting arms of Pone alone. Should be a relatively comfortable round for High Coast in this one. These are snuck into the apartments. Not a bad spot to be if someone's going to come your way, but Ben Lee backs away from that position. High Coast turn a lot of their attention to B. Viz has got to hope they don't check him, but he's actually just walked down the stairs into Pone alone, and the AK wins out that duel. Three players left for the CT side, all of which are on B. The bomb is on the A side, and so I feel like this is just a matter of time. And this one, of course, gets added to the tally for High Coast. They're throwing utility into B, just clearing it out, really keeping the A side clear. And RCF going for the shot, lands it. Not, not exactly getting the kill though, so he's stuck in the corner. Oh god, RCF, I do not envy him. Still hits the headshot somehow. And Cynic just posted, waiting. The utility will come out, the flash ineffective, the following one deep as well. And RCF just trying to get away alive. He's just tucked in the corner now, waiting on his teammates to come and help him out of this. RCF might just be able to go into the next round alive. Cynic has had to change up his position, and the nade goes deep. Nine rounds now for High Coast. Should be a buy for Triumph. There is an argument to be made for saving here if you're on the Triumph side and just making sure you can get a proper full buy into the next. And it looks like that's the approach Triumph want to take. Shakezilla calling for another half buy, which I don't mind at this point. If you want to just be confident that your orps and full nades will be able to close it out, then this is not a bad call to make because you have the rounds to work with. 
there's always a chance you can just go for something a bit risky in this round and find some success. Decent nade damage done onto both MOTM and Bew. But that is now all the nades used up by Triumph in the early proceedings of this round. It's mainly going to be up to the Deagles to do the rest of the damage. Ooh, looks like the wrong read this time. If this B play comes through, I don't think B Wells is going to be holding this alone. <laughs> no. I'm going to take a happy esque play with the Deagle here. Smoke onto the cross. They're already through. And B Wells had the back away. Mm, Commanding the shots with the smoke. Not picking up any kills though, and that will allow High Coast onto the B site. He will now get the bomb planted. Should be a 10th round locked in. Really trying to get something out of this one. Triumph spamming the deagle through the smokes, trying to make it at least expensive. Maybe drop a few players here and there. Oh, God. Smoke kills are ready. Oh, wow. They I've got the wall bag kill. Okay. Yeah. Th this is just Triumph basically hoping that High Coast makes some silly mistakes and fight through the smokes. Can't hear you, Alex. Uh, oh, oh, you're so close to the angle. It's not oh. going to get it. It's not going to make much of a difference, though. I can barely hear myself think, Alex. All the bullets just being spammed through all the smokes, and there we go. Ten rounds for High Coast. Eventually comes through. They lose two players. They're up to double figures. Do you start to believe, Alex? Do you start to see a world in which overtime is a possibility? Oh, nice. Yeah, that's where I, I thought the wall bang might be coming from. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's definitely not out of the question. I, I think now we've got the double orbs, though. This is where we'll get to see if Triumph's save call was worthwhile because they've got those two snipers out. They should have much more of an ability to fight early in the round. And, and furthermore, both orpers on both teams haven't had the sort of impact they would want. This is a chance for one of them to make the difference. Flash over the top. Shakes alert forced off the angle. RCF specifically, second highest orc kills per round so far in this tournament, but that has not come through on Inferno. He's only got 10 kills right now. So High Coast will be hoping that they can get him rolling. Failed the boost there. They're going to go up again. B Wells has been very impactful from this position before. We've seen him get a lot of multi kills. We'll see if Shake Zella can back him up this time as well with the AWP at Pillar. These two positions can be a deadly combo to hold on. And here goes Shake Zella. He's going to miss the first shot. And B Wells not getting anything at all. It's rinse and repeat. B hit after B hit. And High Coast again. Lock it in. Cooper holding for the exit. But the round is already done. 15 to 11, and maybe this is where we start to see those weaknesses creep in for Triumph. The second sniper unable to make the difference early on Banana. Unable to make the difference while holding it from the B site. Cooper lands one kill as an exit, but High Coast's economy is irrelevant at this point in the game. They just have to keep on winning every single round. Nice shot from Cooper, but RCF was waiting in the wings the for the trade. Trading out with his AWP as well. And the bomb goes off for an 11th round. Pine Coast lock it in. Yeah. yeah. This is getting scary now. I mean, hopefully with those save guns, I think they can afford to take a risk in this round, but you, you can't afford to lose rounds that quickly over on the B site. He might need to get some more information, some more ground in some of these future rounds. And they will be sending one of those rifles over to B. Cynic, not normally a B player, but they want to back up the defense on that B side of the map with one of those saved rifles. Yeah, it's hard to look past some of the great individual performances out for Triumph here. We've had everybody having their moments. I think Cooper's been a little quiet on the board, but just, you know, Viz and, and, and Cynic have really stepped up and have been performing really well. I think High Coast on the other side of things, your view has uh, been very, very solid. We've had MOTM having some good entry kills, opening up a lot of rounds for High Coast in the recent few rounds here. Definitely looking good. Good game of Counter-Strike shipping up. If High Coast can continue to pull rounds back, 
And you look at the buy here for Triumph, it's not exactly in a good position. Triumph look to retake banana control. That's something that could be nice for them. Pew is sticking around with the sniper. He's not careful, he could lose this all, but he decides to back up. That's gonna concede banana control, and it might force High Coast into making a move onto this A bomb site. Yeah, they're gonna wrap all around long though. They've got MOTM up here, has been fantastic on those entry kills. We've talked about it so far. We hope the apartments player can get something for the CT side, and Cooper's done that. Now Viz from the graveyard getting one. Cooper, this would be the perfect time to finally show up to the server and deliver the impact we know he's capable of. Good multi-kill, Cynic gets it, and Triumph take it over the line. 16 to 11.